we are live. And so Facebook, YouTube, you can leave comments, ask questions. I'm going to be interviewing young performer George Lorimer. We'll introduce him in a second. Uh, he's part of a very cool new endeavor that's created by a, a group of young professionals that are incredibly talented performers who are inspired to bring new shows to the community. It's Vanguard Productions. Vanguard Productions intends to lead the way for independent theaters in Milwaukee, producing new works with local actors and designers at a professional level. Their debut production is a concert version of a show called All Is Calm, The Christmas Truce of 1914. There are only four performances this weekend at Downtown's Interchange Theater. Tickets are available now at eventbrite.com. It's this Friday, December 16th. There's uh, one on Saturday that's already sold out, but there are still two more chances this Sunday, one matinee and one in the evening. Here is a peek at some of the rehearsal footage. Those harmonies are so haunting and cool. I'm seeing the show this Friday. I'm very intrigued. Vanguard Productions is founded by George Lorimer, who produces and performs in All Is Calm. George was an acting apprentice at the Milwaukee Rep as part of their emerging professional residency. He is also currently a swing in the company's glorious production of A Christmas Carol at the Paps Theater. And he was also in this year's hit musical production of Titanic. Raised in Milwaukee, the actor and singer began performing with First Stage in high school, and after graduating from College of Worcester, he performed in musicals across the country. Locally, he has appeared on the stages of Skylight Music Theater, Summit Players Theater, and more. The spark for his Vanguard Productions concept came during his time in residency at The Rep. George, I want to welcome you to joining me today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Nice to, nice to e-meet you. Mm -hmm. um, and congratulations on your debut, debut production and sold out show already. Thank you. Thank you. It's really exciting. And it's wonderful to see the um, support that we've gotten from the uh, Milwaukee theater community. Definitely. Um, so first, let's start by talking a little bit about your new production company. Um, I know we exchanged a little bit on email and I was curious about your mission with it. And, you know, there are other independent production companies in town and how do you stand out? And it seems like you've already done that. But as the founder and executive producer for Vanguard, what inspired you to create this production company? So uh, Vanguard started as an idea that came from my time as an emerging professional resident with Milwaukee Repertory Theater. Um, there we learned a little bit about self-producing and kind of the steps of going through um, getting a production, finding rehearsal spaces, fundraising. And um, I found myself saying, I've got a little bit of time on my hands. I have nothing booked for the Christmas slot. Um, and I had a little bit of money saved up during COVID. And so I thought, you know, this is a show that I was drawn to for years. I discovered All Is Calm after I graduated college in 2018 and always wanted to do it. Um, but there weren't a ton of productions locally, um, nothing nearby that I could do. And so I decided, you know, I've got this time, I've got a little bit of money, let's go for it. And so the planning of the show started in May and very quickly we started um, looking at rehearsal venues, performance venues, assembling a creative team, and then starting to reach out to people for auditions. Um, something that's really important to me as an actor and as an artist is making sure that artists are getting paid well. Um, I think anybody who's worked in theater has known that um, actors can be overworked and underpaid. And when I finally had the chance to um, be a producer and have those 
levers of power. I wanted to make sure that we're treating actors well. And so um, I think one of the most important tenants of our company is pay equity um, and making sure that we are paying actors um, competitive stipends for their work, um, paying above market rate for their work. And we wanna increase that pay um, for further productions. Um, and one of our goals has been to bring new shows to Milwaukee. Um, this is the first time All Is Calm is being performed in the Milwaukee area. Um, we're doing it as a concert version this year. We hope to do a full production next year. And if we're looking to do new shows, we want to keep doing um, new works that are either premieres or Milwaukee premieres. And if we're going to take on a classic or an older work, uh, I think we want to make sure that we're bringing a new spin to it um, to understand, like, what are we bringing to the theater community? Um, are we just rehashing old shows or are we trying to move the theater uh, community forward? Um, and Throughout all this, we want to make sure they're working with local talent. Um, I think Milwaukee is an incredibly, incredibly talented city. Um, we have a cast of 12 actors um, who are all wonderfully talented um, and, you know, have an excellent set of abilities. And we were able to get that together um, for our first production. And so I think Milwaukee is a city that is um, ripe with talent. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think there are as many production companies in town that are able to um, meet that talent where they're at financially. And so I think, you know, we are trying to commit to um, local Milwaukee performers, directors, music directors, stage managers, designers. And I'm happy to say that we've, you know, been able to work with uh, about 15 to 20 different people on this production, um, paying them, paying them well for their work to mount our first show here. George, I think you just answered all of my questions. That wraps our interview. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need me. You just need your own podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was great, great information. I didn't want to interrupt you, but let's get into the weeds a little bit. Um, sure. Why Why the name Vanguard? Yeah, so um, it's a um, name that I came up with. Our music director, Adam Kudashat, and our director, Joshua Poya. Um, namely, you know, we wanted to say that we're sort of the spear leading um, the Milwaukee theater community forward. So not only are we doing new works, um, we're also kind of trying to lead the way in terms of, you know, pay equity, professionalism for independent theater companies, as well as bringing those new works to the stage. And then it also was a nice tie-in with our um, first show of All Is Calm that, you know, a Vanguard is often considered the um, leader of the first, you know, military force in a place. Um, and so, you know, it kind of is a little double entendre there for uh, our production here. Yeah. And this first production, you're quite passionate about this show. Um, why did you choose this show? And tell me about the first time you saw it and why it touched you so much. Yeah. So um, I first learned about this show when I was a college senior at the College of Worcester. Um, one of the trustees of the, sh of the school um, was the off-Broadway producer of All Is Calm in uh, 2018 when they put it up in New York. Um, and she told me about the show and I knew a little bit about the historical event. I thought, well, that's interesting. Um, and then I stumbled upon a recording of the show done by uh, Contus, the professional men's chorus out of Minnesota, um, and was deeply, deeply moved by the music, the incredible harmonies that you saw in that clip, um, and the storytelling that is all drawn from uh, individual accounts of letters, diaries, journal entries, newspaper articles from the people who were there. Um, and so it is sort of this documentary musical drama. And um, I first saw the show um, in the PBS recording from a Theater Latte Dawes production. Um, they usually air it on PBS every holiday season. I highly recommend it uh, for everyone. It's an excellent version of the show. And so I kept following the show and then uh, COVID hit and theater kind of slowed down and stopped in my life. And I kept coming back to the show. I knew I was drawn to it when I was listening to a Christmas show in the middle of July, uh, that there's something um, magnetic about this piece. And so I always had in the back of my mind, I was like, I want to do this show. I want to be an actor in this show. And eventually I was like, you know what? Um, I've got this time. I think we're just going to do it ourselves. And uh, here we are. The rest is history, as they say. Right. Tell me about the history of All Is Calm. It's a true story, right? Yes, it is. So um, All Is Calm uh, is a retelling of the Christmas truce of 1914. Um, during World War I, um, the war had broken out in August of 1914, um, and the major European powers of England, Germany, and France um, had gone to war on the Western Front, um, and everybody was told that their side was going to win the war incredibly quickly. They were going to be be home by Christmas. That is the line that they kept repeating over and over and over again to the troops. Um, they get there, and 
the grim reality is that is not the case. It's trench warfare is the first industrialized war. It's a you know horrible, horrible time uh, in human history. And these men are stuck in these trenches over Christmas. And um, they're young guys, probably 18, 19 years old. They don't know why they're there. They don't know why they're fighting these people. And um, the conditions are miserable. And eventually they were so close in these trenches, they were sometimes roughly 80 yards apart, they would be able to hear each other. And during the Christmas time, they would actually start singing songs. They would sort of trade carols um, from the German side and the British side. They would trade carols. Um, and there's patriot. actual like documentation of this? Absolutely. Yeah, there are journals and accounts. There are books about it um, talking about how these men started trading songs and eventually built this rapport. Um, and um, on Christmas Eve, 1914, one German actually went out of his trench and started singing Silent Night, um, which in any other time would have been a death sentence. He would have been immediately killed um, for this. And miraculously, um, he went out unarmed and a British soldier met him in no man's land. And they started celebrating Christmas together. They actually met in between their trenches um, and exchanged gifts. Um, met each other. Um, they often took time to bury the dead who were in the middle of these two trenches. Um, and so this broke out across the Western Front and roughly about 100,000 soldiers took part in this truce that was scattered wow. across That's um, Belgium. Crazy. That's amazing. And I mean, it's kind of speaks to the spirit of the season, certainly, but also the universality of music, bringing mm -hmm. people together. And I wish that that spirit would outweigh the spirit of war and fighting in, as a as a means to solving uh problems and differences in nations you know what i mean absolutely Let's talk a little bit about the great casting creative team that you have assembled here for this show um these are some very familiar faces in the community uh professionals that we've seen on reputable stages who who are they in some of their roles yeah, so um, we have a cast of um, 12 actors that includes two onstage swings who have done um, incredible work over the past couple of weeks of jumping in for uh, various roles of cast members having conflicts or being sick. And so I wanted to shout out uh, both of our swings, Isaac and Colton, who have been jumping into a ton of different roles. They are uh, really the backbone of our production. But um, we've got 10 local actors. They all play multiple roles during this production. Um, there are some 40 people mentioned in this show. So everybody's jumping between different roles, playing Brits, Germans, French uh, characters. And so our cast is jumping into a ton of different roles um, with a lot of wonderful soloists that you've probably seen on local stages at The Rep, Skylight, Next Act, and other places. Um, our team is led by our director, Joshua Poya. Um, who's a wonderful local director who's directed at um, uh, First Stage's company class, Pius, uh, Milwaukee Chamber Theater, um, and is really an excellent uh, visual storyteller um, in this concert production of uh, able to create these wonderful shapes and um, this tension, even as we still have stands and books in hands. Um, and then we also have Adam Kudashat, our music director, um, who's really done a wonderful job of uh, crafting this musical ensemble and this is an acapella musical and so we have some 30 songs that we're performing without an orchestra and adam has been able to get our cast to find a wonderful ensemble sound and a great group cohesion in this piece acapella Ooh, how did we do that acapella that's not what i want either <laughs> <laughs> okay here we go sorry i'm live pressing buttons while i'm trying to interview you and i just uh I'm learning this this as I go, I guess. But um, acapella, I love. It's it's it speaks, I think, also to the strength of the talent you, that you've assembled here to be able to stay on key. Obviously, you know, singing is hard enough to stay on, for some people with music accompaniment, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's very impressive, and it's a great way to enjoy. There are Christmas songs in it and some original songs as well. Yeah. So the um, music is drawn from um, a lot of the stuff of the era. Um, so there's Christmas music, as well as uh, historical and um, patriotic songs of the time. And history buffs will recognize um, it's a long way to Tipperary, uh, pack up your troubles in your own kit bag, um, Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles. Um, there's a lot of songs in there that are um, of the era, as well as a lot of Christmas songs as well. And then they are arranged um, by the wonderful team of um, Timothy Takash and uh, Eric Lichte. Um, and... Um, it's really wonderful harmonies. Um, there's some great, great musical pieces in this show. 
And we're seeing some of your uh, behind the scenes rehearsal uh, footage here and, and photos. And it's a concert reading. Why did you decide to do a concert staging versus a full production this season? Sure. Um, as this is our first production, I think we wanted to um, make sure that we were uh, putting a show up on a scale that we were going to execute it well. I think that idea of professionalism is really important to our show and making sure we want to put a high quality product out there. And so um, I chose to do a concert production of the show um, because um, we, we had a limited rehearsal time. Um, we didn't have a ton of money for um, a lot of other production values like, um, you know, lights, costumes, set, etc. So um, I thought it lended itself very well to a concert production. And the show was actually originally written as a radio play. Um, and so um, while this is a concert production, I think audiences are really going to get um, the whole story um, from the music and from the uh, dialogue that our actors are delivering. That's very cool. And there's still some staging to it, right? It's not just literally like like watching a choir. Yeah, we don't, we're not a full park and bark show. And so um, JP, our director, Josh, has done a wonderful job of finding staging, finding moments in there, um, having uh, ways to break out, create our two sides, finding tension in this show, uh, even as we are, you know, kind of limited to our stands sometimes. And we're talking about All Is Calm, the Christmas truce of 1914. Tickets are available at eventbrite.com. Uh, this weekend only, there's four shows, one of which is already sold out. So impressive for a debut company, I believe, at Interchange Theater. Uh, it's it's interesting to me that you chose this show. It's important to you, but it's also you chose a show with no women in it. But moving forward, will you will you do shows with more equal opportunity roles? Absolutely. Um, and I think that's a tricky part about this show is that it is, you know, an all male cast is an all tenor base um, show. I think it's important to bring in that we've, you know, hired, um, you know, women um, behind the scenes. We have um, our wonderful dramaturg, uh, Kate Ackerboom, um, our stage manager, Liv Mosseff, um, our speech coach, Jane Pink. Um, and so we've tried to make sure we're um, finding ways to hire um, female women artists, gender non-conforming artists um, in our cast and in our production, even if we can't put them on stage. And moving forward, I think if we are going to produce other shows, we definitely want to expand um, the can of what we're bringing on stage and um, creating opportunities um, for um, you know women and actors um, in Milwaukee as well. Definitely. And are you more of a fan of musicals or do you do straight plays as well? What do you see as the future for Vanguard? So personally, as an actor, I've done a lot of musicals. That's where I've been finding my work. And so often that's the canon that I look to of like, oh, these are the shows that I would love to do. These are the stuff that I would love to audition for. Um, certainly as a company, I think we want to see ourselves breaking out into um, all areas of theater uh, in Milwaukee of, you know, doing straight plays. Uh, we love to do some Shakespeare adaptations, um, doing devised work, new work. And so I think we're really trying to find um, just shows that speak to our ethos um, of bringing new work, um, bringing new voices to the stage and uh, bring work at a really high level. And there's a lot of really wonderful work out there that hasn't been seen in Milwaukee yet. And so um, I think we've got a lot coming for you. I love this show. I mean, I think one of the great things is it's uh, it's only an hour and 15 minutes and no intermission. Yeah, I think that's something that I've I've noticed with a lot of shows um, recently that I've seen it like Next Act or um, The Rep is that you know, just a tight, you know, hour 15 is really, really nice time frame for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But the uh, your Friday performance, it starts at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Why that time? That seems kind of early. Yeah, we chose an earlier time, um, one, to accommodate some people who had conflicts with um, A Christmas Carol. Um, we okay. have some people who are swings um, in Milwaukee Reps production of A Christmas Carol, and we wanted to make sure, just in case people had to go on, that um, we could potentially have someone do All Is Calm and then make half hour um, at the PAPS, you know, just a couple of minutes away. Um, also, I think I... I um, for the Milwaukee community, it's nice that people are able to go see a show, um, grab dinner, and you know have a kind of earlier night here for some people, especially around the holiday season. Um, I know a lot of people are you know really ready to wind down a little bit and relax, and so um, it's nice that you can catch this show, um, go grab dinner, and be in bed by nine. Yeah, I kind of like it. At first, mm -hmm. I was like, I thought there was a mistake. You know, I'm like, it mm -hmm. can't start at five. I got to get there at 4.30, 4.45. What is this? Well, you know, but then I was like, it's actually 5 p.m. And then I'm like, this is kind of great because you have your night then still on a Friday. So I know some people it's prohibitive if they have work, but some people can either get out early on certain Fridays or if they've got, you know, some 
PTO as they call it. The mm -hmm. rest of it. But I think it's a really cool option. It, it, it's nice that you did that. Um, before I let you go and we remind people how they can come see your, your show and support you guys, which is an incredible talent. And I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, we have some friends in common. You worked recently with Sarah Zapian, Maya Danks, Caroline Norton, Shakespeare in the State Parks with Summit Players Theater this yes. summer. And uh, I worked with all of them recently and became friends with them this year at Forte Theater Company's The Sound of Music. And they're so wonderful. So just had to give them each a shout out. And it's cool. Wonderful group of people. They are yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Tell me everything. Let's dish about Maya. Yeah. <laughs> She's one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. She's just so like, cool. So, so talented. Uh, and so incredibly talented. Of, right? Yeah. Versatile and of. I think we have a lot of friends in common coming to the show on Friday. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. I'm sure. Absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. I'm so impressed with you. I've seen you on stage. I loved uh, what you did in A Christmas Carol already. Uh, I know you came in as a swing. You've done the show before, but I was there opening night for the reps production, which is always amazing. But no matter how many times you see it, and actually I got to do a walk-on role in it. I was one of the you know people they brought in for a walk-on. They, they're not oh, yeah. doing it currently, but in 2019, I, I've always loved the show so much. So that was a great honor. But uh it, no matter how many times you see it, it's still incredibly uh, entertaining. And mm -hmm. it just, doesn't, it never, it doesn't get boring. It's like there are certain movies you can watch over and over again, but this is live theater to be able to see several times really never gets tired because it's different every time because of the, how it's literally a living piece of art. Is there any show that you've seen multiple times? Yeah. Um, shows that I've seen multiple times. Um, definitely last year at the rep, I saw a couple pieces both opening and closing. Like I saw Steel Magnolias both times. Um, no, but I'm talking about like, you know, more than 10 times. Like I've seen Wicked 46 times. Ooh, George. more than 10. I don't know if I've, I've, I've done more than 10. I think okay. I, I've always seen, you know, a handful of times, maybe, you know, five or six, but I, I've never broken double digits. All right, all right. That's, so you're just not the big nerd that I am, let's be honest. <laughs> um, it's what makes me a good audience member, though, right? That's that's my lane. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. This is really fantastic. I'm very, once again, very impressed. And I just want to let everyone know that it's Vanguard Productions' debut production, All Is Calm, The Christmas Truce of 1914. Uh, it runs this Friday, December 16th through December 18th. Two shows that day. The Saturday is already sold out. Tickets are available at Eventbrite. Dot com. If you'd like to follow George and get in touch with him, he's uh, your social is George underscore Lorimer underscore. And you can also follow at Vanguard Productions MKE to see everything you guys have coming up. And I appreciate your time. We look forward to seeing the trajectory of your great career. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you at the show. And thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you, too. All right.